So, current sense amplifiers. Suppose you want to measure current somewhere and you're using a current sense resistor or shunt resistor for that purpose. So you have a little voltage drop proportional to your current across that resistor. And of course you choose a very small resistor, as small as possible, to keep the voltage drop as small as possible because you don't want to burn unnecessary power. Um, that opens a little problem because usually you want to do something with that voltage drop. For example, feed it into an analog digital converter, in this case inside a microcontroller. You could use a dedicated analog to digital converter, of course. Or you want to drive <coughs> sorry, uh, an uh, analog instrument with it. Yeah. One solution immediately comes to mind, use an op amp. And I have here LM471. They are cheap, available, no problem, and uh, quite old, by the way. And at least when we're talking about high side current sensing, and I will concentrate on high side current sensing mainly, you would use that op amp in a differential amplifier configuration. However, in the first part of this video, I will show you why you might not want to use an op amp for that purpose, but instead a dedicated current sense amplifier. I have here an LT6105. Um, we'll talk about common mode voltages, supply voltages, a little bit about output voltages, rail to rail stuff, but um, yeah, there are rail to rail op amps, so I will just skim over that. And we will talk a whole lot about common mode rejection ratio. And yeah, I will go in depth about that topic. Uh, I mean, decibel and logarithm and math, sorry, included. But after we've done that in the next video, uh, which should be out next week, we will have a look at uh, some examples of current sense amplifiers from different vendors, what they can do, what they not can do, and uh, why they are so much better in that application than a standard purpose op amp. And finally, we will take this cute little LT6105 and this, sorry, 50 milliohm current sensor resistor and drive with that this analog instrument in a range from 0 to 400 milliamps. Yeah. So on the left we have our sense resistor. Let's call it our sense. <laughs> and the first thing um, I will have to mention is we are here talking about high side current sensing. That is our load will be somewhere below our sense resistor connected directly to ground. So our sense resistor is on the high side. And uh, yeah, to complete that picture, we have uh, some transistor uh, regulating the current going through here. Uh, doesn't matter what kind of transistor that is. 
and of course we need some kind of power source. Again, it doesn't matter what kind of power source, uh, transformer, rectifier, uh, filter capacitor or directly battery as I've drawn it here. And I said our voltage drop around the sense resistor should be very low. So let's say we want to have um, a maximum drop of uh, 50 millivolts per amp across this resistor. And that means our R sense would end up being 50 milliohms. Incidentally, exactly the value of that shunt resistor. Um, and on the other hand, we want to have 5 volts per amp somewhere as input to our analog digital converter. So, uh, the simple solution to that using an op amp is, uh, of course, using the op amp in a differential amplifier configuration. And yeah, let's draw our big op amp here. Positive input, negative input going somewhere here to our output and then we have our four resistors for differential amplifier. Yeah, and there are enough videos uh, and information on the internet about these differential amplifiers. need our negative feedback resistor and here we have simply a voltage divider that is that's going to ground too simple um, the formula and uh, well I need to label the resistors R1, R3 and R2, R4. So the formula if R1 is equal to R2 and R3 is equal to R4. So R3 these are the same and these two are the same is simply our V out is equal R3 divided by R1 times our V plus that would be this point here minus our V minus. So, and uh, of course from 50 and let's say we have a uh, yeah, maximum of one amp going down here. Uh, so 50 millivolts per amp, five volts per amp maximum at five volts. Uh, we need an amplification of uh, 100. The 50 millivolts here should go to the five volts. So that's simply, uh, for example, 100K here for R3, 100K R1 would be 1K. And so R4, the same as R3, 100K. And R2 would be also 1K. That simple. Now, why differential amplifier? Uh, 
because the absolute values measured to ground of V minus and V plus, uh, they are floating. Yeah, depending on what voltage you have on your load, they are going up and down. So we really want to measure only the difference, the differential across our sense resistor. Just as a side note, of course you could use low side current sensing. That is your sense resistor uh, sense would be reference to ground and it would be below the load. Okay, and then we have here our uh, series transistor somewhere. And uh, then of course your R sense is not floating around. So you don't really need a differential amplifier and, uh, when you do low side current sensing, but uh, there are various reasons why you don't want low side current sensing in many applications. Uh, one is uh, <laughs> uh, while your R sense is now nicely referenced to ground, your load is now floating around in the breeze. Uh, and uh, in our example, we had here uh, 50 milliohms and a maximum of one amp. So your load is now going up and down between the, that end of the load between zero volts and 50 millivolts and <laughs> yeah <clears throat> for example uh, in, in lab power supplies you usually try to avoid uh, low side current sensing in, in other applications it might be okay just uh, as a side note. So back to our uh, high side sensing with the differential op amp. I stumble most of the time about uh, two major problems here. The first is the power supply for the op amp. So your VCC plus and your VCC minus. Um, Unless you have a rail-to-rail op-amp, which can really drive the output uh, to the negative rail or up to the positive rail, um, your VCC minus, sorry, <clears throat> it's in the way, uh, you need to be a little bit below ground to get at your output down really to zero volts. So uh, for example, we have to do something like minus two volts here. Um, that's not the case uh, if you, or almost not the case, if you use a rail to rail amplifier, which really can drive the output to, hmm, yeah, almost VCC minus or almost VCC plus. Uh, we talk about that a little bit later uh, in the example. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have really a run of the mill op amp, you need a negative supply voltage here uh, in reference to ground. And also op amps do not like their inputs uh, being on any voltage that's outside the range of VCC plus and VCC minus. So for example, if we have uh, here 40 volts, arbitrary value, and we drive our load, that is this point here, between O and 40 volts, your supply voltage for your op amp has to be at least 40 volts too. Yeah, could be the same rail. And there, yeah, for example, your uh, LM471, uh, it 
does at most plus minus 18 volts so 36 volts so yeah this rail uh respectively this rail 36 minus the two um, would be at most at most 34 volts and um, yeah getting really high voltage uh, amplifiers mm, yeah expensive uh, so that's the first problem your um, it's also called uh, the common mode input voltage yeah, common also to reference to common ground um, there's that limitation with op amps while different uh, current sense amplifiers for example uh, would allow you or most of them do allow you to use here let's say okay five volt output uh, rail to rail <laughs> a five volt supply and uh, yeah again rail to rail put here your negative supply simply to ground and at the same time have here input voltages far above your positive VCC so this would be for 40 volts here and only 5 volt supply voltage for your current amp amplifier would be completely acceptable not so with op amps as I said the second problem uh, I stumble about needs a little bit of number crunching um, but it basically stems from that formula here which is only valid if R1 is exactly R2 and R3 is exactly equal to R4 so let's suppose for an example and a little bit of number crunching um, we are one percent only one percent off on each resistor and uh, yeah I'm constructing here a worst case scenario so 99k 101k here again let's say 0.99k and here 1.01k okay um, now we have to crunch some numbers so we have this formula here for the amplification uh, which is only valid for R1 equal R2 and R3 equal R4 as soon as these resistors are no longer the same suddenly that formula here applies then your V out is R1 plus R3 over R1 times R4 over R2 plus R4 times V plus minus R3 over R1 times v minus and just as a side note if you replace here the r4 uh, yeah if that would apply by r3 and the r2 by r1 and the uh, that r4 also by the r3 you get that formula and now it's easy to see we can uh, yeah shorten that out and then we get R3 over R1 again so uh, R3 over R1 times V plus minus R3 over R1 times V minus and that is our formula when this applies the resistors both pairs are equal well <clears throat> in our example here they are not equal yeah one percent off each so we end up with something like that 101 plus 99 of 1.01 101 over 0.99 plus 101 
times v plus minus 99 over 1.01 .01 times v minus. And uh, if you put that into a calculator, you come up with something like that. So our output voltage is 89.06 times v plus minus 98.02 times v minus. So this term and this term. And uh, of course we can, uh, yeah, 89.02, we can draw that out and we get 98.02 times v plus minus v minus. But then an additional term plus 0.04 looks little, but uh, you see it's not v plus. And this is called your differential amplification, a diff, which is 89. Yeah, we aim for 100, but uh, we are down at 89, um, which, yeah, it, it's reasonable. I mean, uh, worst case, um, yeah, plus minus 1%, so 1% resistors, and uh, I constructed here worst case, so we are down in the amplification uh, about 2%, completely reasonable. But this here, this really hurts us. And this is usually called the amplification of the common mode. Common mode meaning the voltage of our V plus and our V minus, and in that case our, only our V plus, uh, in respect to ground. So uh, when our voltage on the load is going up or down, even if the current stays the same, uh, our output changes. And that's not what we want. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's very, very small at the first glance. So uh, I call this a common mode and yeah that's not in the literature usually injection <laughs> there's another term for that and another measurement for that which i will show you in a minute um, <clears throat> but basically this means we get an error of 40 yeah, 0 0.04, 40 millivolts per volts common mode. And that is enormous because that basically means um, if your voltage is at zero volts, uh, we have no error, of course. If your voltage is at one volt, we have 40 millivolts error. If it's at 10 volt, we have 400 millivolts error or 0.4 volts and uh, yeah if we go to, um, the whole mile to the 40 volts uh, that gives us a maximum error of 1.6 volts which is uh, <clears throat> crazy I mean that's crazy that's basically, uh, yeah, our full scale is 5 volts and uh, 1.6 volts. Uh, you do the math, but uh, this is something about 40% uh, or so error. And we used 1% resistors. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and the usual way to measure this or uh, how it's written in data sheets is as a common mode rejection ratio and that's usually given in db and that is calculated as 20 times the log 10 
yeah, your usual DB, uh, maybe a side note about that in a second, uh, your A differential divided by your A common mode. And in our case, uh, that's 20 times the log 10 of 89.02 divided by 004. You see, the smaller that arrow is, the greater that number gets. Uh, and the greater our common mode rejection ratio. Yeah, I said here injection and this is rejection. So, uh, yeah, the greater the number, the better. Um, so I'm running a little bit out of space here. Uh, yeah, I pre-calculated the values. So this is basically uh, 20 times the log 10 of and this term is 4901. And the log 10 from that number, and I talk about the log in a second, is 20 times 3.69. And 20 times 3.69. So we have in our example, a common mode rejection ratio of 68 decibel. It's a large number, but as you have seen uh, the error you would produce with that CR, CMRR is abysmal. Um, now the nice thing about decibels is, uh, and that's the reason engineers like to use them, if we would use 0.1% tolerance resistors, this would go up by 20 dBs. So we would end up at 88 dBs common mode rejection ratio. Yeah, at that point, a uh, little side note may be about uh, that decibel stuff and uh, how that works. So that log 10 function is really simple. So uh, for example, the log 10 of one is zero. The log 10 of 10 is 1 of 100, it's 2 of 1000, it's 3 and of 10,000, it's, sorry, 4. And uh, you see, it's really just <laughs> the numbers of zeros. Yeah, four zeros, four, three zeros, three, two zeros, two, one zero, one, no zero, zero. And uh, the inverse function is, of course, if you take uh, the log 10 uh, from one and you want to have this number, then that's 10 to the power of one log 2, 10 to the power of 2, 3, 10 to the power of 3, 4, 10 to the power of 4. And for 0, it's uh, of course 10 to the power of 0, which is 1. Decibel is now just only the log 10 times 20. And this gives you then 20 decibel, 40 decibel, 60 decibel, 
and 80 decibel. And our value that was 4901. That would be somewhere, uh, yeah, logarithmic scale, uh, somewhere here, and would get us to our, yeah, 86 decibel. So basically you have uh, increased something by a factor of 10 and you increase it on the decibel scale um, uh, by linear by 20. Um, it's also nice to know how to calculate back from the decibel yeah, uh, to this number here, to the actual common mode amplification. And uh, yeah, here it will become clear why they don't give this factor, this amplification simply in data sheets, but uh, the common mode rejection ratio. Okay, getting now a little bit uh, mathematical. <clears throat> so our uh, common mode rejection ratio we said is 20 times the log 10 of a differential, the amplification we want, plus the amplification of the common mode voltage. If we want to know now, and uh, this will be given in the data sheet for uh, any amplifier, um, what's the amplification of our common mode voltage for a given differential amplific amplification, sorry, uh, we the first step take over, uh, divide the whole thing by 20, so it's the common mode rejection ratio divided by 20 is equal to the log 10 of the differential amplification over the common mode amplification. And we said the inverse function to the log 10 is simply 10 to the power of x. So we have 10 to the power of the CMRR over 20 is equal to our differential amplification our, over our common mode amplification. And so multiply by the common mode amplification and divide by that, you get your common mode amplification is your differential amplification over 10 to the power of common mode rejection ratio divided by 20. And with that formula, we can now calculate, for example, our common mode amplification for the 88 dB that I've thrown around uh, when we would be using 0.1%, yeah, uh, just, uh, yeah, rule of thumb. Uh, one decade better uh, tolerance on the resistors would yield us uh, 20 dB factor 10 better common mode rejection ratio. And yeah, if you put the numbers in 100 divided by 10 to the power of 88 divided by 20. So 100 divided by 10 divided uh, 10 to the power of 4.4 you get 100 over, and this is a big number. So uh, yeah, put simply put that in calculator, at least four zeros, one, two, three, four. This is 100 divided by 25,119. And this gives us almost, almost 1.004. So it's 1.00398. <clears throat> and yeah, uh, when I was guesstimating, I said it would be 1.004. So yeah, good enough. And uh, 
The reason for that little uh, difference is quite simple to explain. If you put the values for 0.1% resistors, worst case, uh, into our formula for the V out, and uh, yeah, I, I will not read out the numbers now, but uh, in effect, what you get is an amplification of not quite 100, but 99.8 for really the differential amplification. And uh, yeah, so you end up with, yeah, a slight difference here. But uh, for all practical purposes, uh, you can forget about that. Yeah, that was a whole lot of theory and math, but um, yeah, at least for me, it's important to understand what, uh, yeah, for example, uh, common mode rejection ratio of uh, 85 uh, in a data sheet, what that really means. And uh, yeah, if you're designing a circuit, uh, <laughs> it is actually important. So in the next video, which should be out next week, and uh, if it's available, a uh, card link, um, I will have a look at a bunch of current sense amplifiers that are available. And I will build up a little circuit using the LT. T6105 and uh, my trusty shunt slash current sense resistor uh, to drive this analog instrument from a current of 0 to 400 milliamps. Yeah, 0 to 40, the scale. <laughs> Till then, bye.